Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing the first editing tutorial that I've done in a while. Um, you guys were asking about editing tutorials lately and I do want to make a full length, more detailed version of an editing tutorial to offer you guys. But for now, for this YouTube video, I'm going to just kind of show you guys the basics of what I do and show you guys how I would correct an overexposed image because when I shared the before and after of the image that I'm gonna be working on today, which is the one that's in the thumbnail, you guys were really curious about how I corrected and fixed that exposure and edited it. So that's why I wanted to make this video for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. And if you did, give it a like or like right now ahead of time. And let's just jump right into the editing tutorial. Before I continue, I do want you guys to know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. For those of you who don't know what that is, Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn and wants to explore their own creativity. You can invest in yourself and your personal growth with Skillshare. If you're trying to learn a specific skill, it's more than likely on Skillshare. There's categories on so many things, including photography, graphic design, cinematography, and so much more. Honestly, you just need to go to Skillshare yourself and check out everything they have on there. There's times where I want a refresher and some things like off-camera flash, for example. So one class that I looked into recently is called Off-Camera Flash, The Definitive Guide to Creative Lighting for Digital Photographers by Warren Marshall. And I really think a lot of you guys would benefit from watching this class because it was really easy to understand and take in all the information and tips that was going on in this class. Plus, he goes through a lot of different photo shoots in this class and you guys can see exactly what was going through his mind as he was taking the photos. And of course, he also shows you the final results as well. There's so many different benefits to joining Skillshare, including the fact that it's ad free, so you can focus entirely on learning. There's also new premium classes launched every week, so there's always something new to discover. And their entire catalog of classes offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. I personally joined Skillshare because I saw a lot of different YouTubers talk about it, and it was really interesting and when I joined Skillshare, I honestly learned a lot right away. It just had a format that really worked well with me. And I think it would benefit a lot of you guys as well. If you guys are interested in trying Skillshare out, the first thousand of you to use my link in the description area below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, so here's the shot that we're gonna be editing today. It's completely straight out of camera. No edits have been made so far other than the camera's adjustments. And I did shoot this at ISO 100 at 1 160th of a second f1.4. I did use the Sony a6000 with the 16 f1.4 by Sigma, which is a crop sensor lens. And I did take the shot with a single speed light, a $60 speed light with a shoot through umbrella. So I really wanted to demonstrate that you can take great photos with basic gear, but sometimes if you mess up, then you need to do a little bit of post work, which is what we're doing in this video. I would say step one for this video would be to correct the exposure in the bright areas. So what I'm gonna do right now is just lower the exposure of the entire shot let's say by maybe 0.8 of a stop. So almost a full stop. And right now she is dark, but right now the exposure of the background is where I would want it to be. Not too bright, but not too dark. So she's gonna be the focus of the photo, the attention. So what we need to do now, since we already reduced the exposure of the entire shot, is now we need to bring up some exposure just on her. So step two, in other words, is gonna be increasing the exposure now on only her. And Lightroom does have new kind of features when it comes to just isolating the subject and just kind of adjusting exposure on certain subjects. But let's go ahead and try to do it manually in case you guys don't have that updated feature in Lightroom. So I'm gonna hit K and it is gonna bring up the, the new feature that's over here in the side but I am gonna do it manually as if you didn't have these uh, new updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the plus and I'm gonna click on brush. And now what I'm gonna do is right now, since there's nothing, um, no adjustments being made here on the side, if I were to just paint on her, it would be doing nothing. So we do need to add some adjustments here on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add quite a bit of exposure, let's say all the way up to four. And the reason why I'm going so far in the exposure is so I can clearly see exactly what I'm painting. After I paint exactly what I want to be affected, and it's very obvious, then I'll scale down and go back to a lower adjustment level. So let's go ahead and just start doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint on her. And one thing that's actually really crucial to painting this is making sure that you do have the, um, the feather here on 100. If I were to go to feather zero and I paint, 
you can see that it's very hard edged and very obvious where it was, you know, painted. So you definitely want it to be on feather 100. And the flow and density, if you had that all the way on 100, if you paint somewhere, it's very, very boom in your face, you know, very fast. The adjustment was made very, very abruptly. And if you go ahead and do the opposite and go to a low flow and density, it's very, 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 very subtle. So it's very gradual in other words. And then I'm gonna hit control Z. So it's slower and faster. So I, I found like a good level between the two is going to something like 60 or 50. So I'm gonna just keep it on 60 for now on both of these. And now I'm gonna continue painting on just her. Make sure to increase and decrease the size of the brush depending on what you're painting. Okay, so here I have her all painted except for a little bit of the bag. So I'm gonna just kind of paint over it right now. But if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well you went over some areas right here and right here, you can always just remove that area that you accidentally painted over by hitting Alt or holding Alt. And then you can just kind of just correct that. So I'm gonna just quickly do that right now. Basically what you want to avoid is having a big glow on the subject. A small subtle glow is okay. Because again, right now we have it at exposure plus four. And I'm gonna go ahead and now scale it back down by clicking and dragging this slider a little bit lower. And basically what you have to aim for is a level that you feel like is a correct exposure on her. So right now I feel like that would probably be 1.6, whoa, not 16, 1.6. Maybe a little bit more realistic would be 1.4. And I feel like that level now is a good exposure on her. And now basically the biggest step that we've done so far is correcting the exposure. Because again, the whole exposure was way too bright. So there was nothing really to focus on. So that's why we lowered the exposure of the entire shot and then brought up the exposure back on just her. And just to show you guys what we did so far, here is the before and here is the after. So again, that was just the correcting of the exposure. And now basically what I'm going to do is just see what else I want to fix. And usually what I will always do is not just increase the exposure of just the subject in case they're a little tad, you know, a tad too dark, but also increase the exposure of the eyes in case they're a little too dark, which I do feel for this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on the eyes and then grab another adjustment brush. And then I'm going to just paint. I do have a, a preset for dark eyes but you guys can just copy exactly what's on over here. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and just paint over the, just the eye and go ahead and go to this eye now and paint over the just the eye. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm done with the eye and done the exposure of the sky and everything else. And then I'm gonna exit the adjustment brush by hitting K again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the colors of the shot because that's something that I always do with my photos. And the way that I do that in Lightroom is scrolling down all the way to the bottom and where it says calibration, the blue primary saturation slider is something that I always bring from 60 to 80. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead to go to 80 and it added so much more color to the photo and much more life in my opinion to the photo as well. And usually what this, you know, increasing that saturation slider will do is add too much oranges and too much blues into the shot. But for this photo, it actually seems okay. If anything, maybe they feel like there's a little bit of magenta in the shot because the A6000 is pretty known for having a little bit of magenta and a little bit of greens too much in the in the, the exposures. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see if that needs to be correcting. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on the temperature. Let's see, maybe to 6,100. And I do feel like the shot is a tad little bit of green tint. So to correct that, I'm gonna go a little bit more on the magenta side. So I'm gonna go to maybe like 50. And I do feel like it's pretty good right now. And if anything else that I would wanna correct is maybe how the blues look like. Cause I feel like right now there's very much of magenta shift in the, the blues, the blue tones in the sky. So one way that you can fix those tones or at least alter them to how you want them to look like is going to the hue saturation luminance section all that does is just change the color selectively. So you could change the, the type of blue or the type of any color here. You can add how much saturation, 
decrease or increase the saturation of that color or make that color brighter or darker. And that's the luminant section. So again, what I feel like this photo needs to be corrected is the type of color. So the type of blues. So that would mean changing the hue. So let's go ahead and see how changing the hues of the different colors affects the photo. As I said before, I do feel like there's a lot of magenta going on in the shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the purple and magenta and adjust the sliders and see what those do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with purple and then shift it up. Yeah, you definitely see a lot more purple in the shot. So by going the opposite direction and going down, you see less of the purples in the shot. So I'm gonna have it at negative 40 because I feel like it corrected a lot of the shot. Here is the before. And then pay attention to this section, I guess, right here. And then here is the after. And it is very subtle, but it is very present at the same time, if that makes any sense. But now I'm gonna go into the magenta slider and see what that does. Okay, so if you do focus on the whites and the jacket and the shorts, you can see that when I increase the magenta and then decrease it, you can see it's very much a different color in the jacket and in the whites on her shirt and in the shorts. So if I want to kind of find a, find a balance between the two, I probably just go a little bit lower and go to maybe negative 20 or so. And I'm going to keep it there. And now I honestly feel like the exposure is perfectly fine where I want it to be. But let's say I wanted that sky a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more present and visible. So then I would get another adjustment brush and selectively paint the sky. Or I could just kind of just lower the highlights right now over the entire shot just a little bit more. And I, I feel like that did a good job because there was some strong, there was some strong highlights in her shirts and a little bit on the arm and these highlights on the side of the face. So here's the before. And then I'm going to hit negative 60 again. And it is still pretty strong on the skin and we're going to correct that in Photoshop. But for now, at least in the sky, it does look good. So now we can actually export this image from Lightroom and start working it, working on it in Photoshop. Okay, so now we're here in Photoshop and usually when I open the image in Photoshop, I try to just grab a second or two to kind of just see exactly what's bugging me about the image so I can correct it and fix it or adjust it in some way. So for this shot here, I am seeing a couple of different things. I have about five things to correct first before I go into the more creative kind of editing, which is like selective color. So it's one, two, three, four, and all these gum stops are like five. So usually what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of clone snap tool, patch tool, and I think those are the main two things that I use. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, patch tool and clone snap tool, and see exactly what I can fix in the shot. But you guys will see in the sped up version, you can actually slow it down a bit what exactly I'm doing. I definitely recommend always getting a brand new layer that's the plus right here. And then removing those distractions on that layer, you can definitely label it. So I'm going to do that right now, call it something like distractions. And then I'm going to go ahead and start removing those distractions. Okay. So the very next thing that I want to do is frequency separation. And, and it is a bit complicated of a tool. So I am going to do like a brief version of that. But all you need to know is that you're separating the image into texture and color. And the way, the reason why you're doing that is so that you can modify those different things, color and texture on their own separate layers, rather than them being combined and maybe messing up one or the other when you want to just focus on one. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a copy of the entire layer right now that we've done so far. I'm going to hit plus and then hit command or control alt shift E. And that makes a copy of the layer so far. Everything that we've done is now on just one layer. And now I'm going to hit command or control J. And now I'm going to hold down shift. And while this top one is selected, hold down shift and click the bottom layer. Now hit command or control G. And that's going to just basically group them together. And then double clicking on the words group one. Now you can change the, the title of that group into FS, which is going to be frequency separation. This bottom layer, layer one, is gonna be renamed to low. And the top one is gonna be renamed to high. There's different ways that people have labeled these different layers. You can say a color or texture, but I just found it's just easier because low's you know, on the bottom and high is on the top. So we're gonna just name that for now. 
and then click on low, go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. And then for an image like ours at 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, which is, I think is like 20 megapixels or so, five should be fine. And now I'm going to click on high and go to image, apply image, click on this where it says layer, click where it says merged and click on low. And now you're going to change the blending mode to subtract and make sure that you have all of these different settings the same scale to offset 128. And that's pretty much everything that you need to, you need it to look like right here, click. Okay. And then you're going to change the blending mode of the high layer from normal to linear light. And now if I unclick this layer and click back on, it looks exactly the same, but now the image is divided into texture and color so that you, again, you can just change those things selectively on their own layers. Everyone has their different uses for frequency separation, but for me specifically, I like to do a little bit of softening in the skin if there's rough areas of the skin, or if there's certain areas in the clothing that's like wrinkly, then I can actually use frequency separation to kind of smoothen out those wrinkles. So it's like a digital iron for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I do have the color layer selected. This is, I just want to kind of affect just the softening of the skin. That's gonna be the color layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on the legs because I do see that there's a little bit of a bruise here that I want to fix right here. So again, make sure that the low layer is selected. And instead of going to the regular brush, which is right here, hold down and click on this layer, this icon, and then go to mixer brush and then copy the different, uh, different settings that I have here on top. And then now when you go ahead and just paint, basically it's called a mixer brush in my opinion, because you can basically think of it as a wet brush with an oil painting or a wet painting. I think that's what it's called. Just think of it as a wet brush. So whenever I'm painting something and dragging down, it's kind of moving that color and spreading it into the other area that I'm painting on. So when I paint from here with this lighter color down to here with this darker bruise, it's going to go ahead and just fix it by painting some of this lighter color onto that. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. And now if I just go ahead and just click before and after, you can see that's exactly what I did. I just basically moved this skin tone into the lower section of that leg. And then again, it's this, this is definitely something that you can overdo. So I would, you know, say to proceed with caution. So I'm going to go ahead and just do very light strokes and then definitely make sure that the skin tones, the tones and the highlights that you're kind of messing with do stay realistic. So you see that there's a dark line right here. You see that there's a bright line right here. If I were to move some of this darkness over into this area, then now it kind of just makes it unrealistic because that highlight was just in a, a line right there. And I just made it unrealistic by adding some of that darkness into that highlight. So definitely keep that in mind as well. I'm going to do a little bit of this back leg. Again, I do have the mixer brush selected. I do have a shortcut for it. I changed it from B to N. So I would definitely recommend you guys do that as well. And now I'm just going to go paint up a little bit and that's it. And then I'm going to just kind of rush through it and just see if there's any other areas that need to be fixed. I think this highlight on the skin here is something that I would want to correct. You probably noticed that I did paint over into the hair. So it looks a little funky, but I did that for a reason. So just like with, I think I mentioned somewhere else uh, with the adjustment layer brush in Lightroom, sometimes I can go over into areas that I don't mean to, and then I can just take them off. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the folder frequency separation folder, click on the masking brush. And now I'm going to paint black into areas that I messed up and painted over. So I'm gonna change the flow to a little bit higher so it can be a little bit faster and now paint off this area that's on her hair. And the good thing about this is that I kind of corrected those overblown highlights by painting some of this color over here onto those highlights. So this is the before and this is the after before and after. And now I'm going to zoom out and I am going to just see that it looks pretty good to me so far. Frequency separation did a good job, but I can also, like I said before, fix some of the wrinkles. So I do feel like this is a little bit wrinkled. So now I'm going to get my mixture brush as well. 
make sure that I have the right layer, which is this low layer, not stain on that masking brush or mask, that mask. And now I'm gonna click on that, click on N, which is my shortcut for the mixture brush and just paint over here. And here is the before and here's the after. And I don't think there's anything too bad else except for maybe this little area here that I'm just gonna correct. But again, I'm just painting the lighter areas of the jacket into the darker areas. But again, I do wanna make sure that it looks realistic. So there are some shadows here. So if I were to paint some of this brightness into that shadowed area, it wouldn't make sense. So just make sure that it's realistic. And then now I feel like it's pretty good. And now I'm gonna just move on to the next step. I'm gonna zoom out and take another look at the shot and see what I need to fix. Right now when I actually zoomed in on her face, I felt like the right eye, there's no catch light in that right eye. So I'm gonna copy the left eye highlight or catch light and copy it to the right eye. I'm now gonna go ahead and just grab a brand new layer. And just like before, well, make sure it's in the right spot above the frequency separation folder. And now just like before, I'm gonna hit Command or Control, Alt Shift E. And that basically made a copy of everything so far. And the reason why I want to make a copy is like I said a second ago, I want to copy this left eye, at least the catch light in that eye, over to the right eye. So I hit L, got the lasso tool, and painted that left eye. I'm gonna hit Command or Control J, which makes a layer or which makes a copy of whatever you selected onto its own layer. So the eye, for example. And now I'm gonna delete that other layer underneath it. And then I'm gonna move with V. I'm gonna move that, change the opacity a little bit lower, and then see where it kind of lines up with the eye. Command and Control T to just change the, the orientation of it, the rotation of it. And I think that's good so far. And then just bring it back up. I'm gonna hit that layer with the eye, hold down the mask, convert the layer now into just black by holding com Command or Control I. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the highlight in the eye, the catch light, just selectively in that area. So I'm gonna just hit my brush tool and I'm gonna make sure that I'm painting white to reveal what's hidden. And now when I paint over, it should be the highlight or the catch light now. And then I'm gonna hit, I feel like it's a little too high. So now I feel like it's good. And now there's catch lights in both of the eyes. I would pretty much do dodge and burn right now, but I feel like it's gonna take up a lot of time. But basically what I do is just hit um, the adjustment layers here. I get curves and I go up a level and then I invert the layer and then name it dodge. And then I get another adjustment layer, the curves adjustment layer. I go down one level and then I change it to burn and I, I forgot to invert it. Command or control I. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and just paint certain areas on the skin or usually what I will do is paint in the center of the arms and the legs. I'll paint it brighter and then the edges will be darker. So you'll see exactly what I'm gonna do right now with global dodge and burn, which just means painting, you know, when you're zoomed out. And when you want to correct sort of like inconsistencies in the skin with darker areas and brighter areas in the skin, that's called local dodge and burn, which is zoomed in. So let's just start with global dodge and burn. You definitely want to make sure that your flow is pretty low. I'm gonna put it to maybe 2% and then the opacity is 100%. Just like before in Lightroom, you wanna make sure that you're changing the size of the brush depending on what you're painting. So the way that you do that in Photoshop is you hit the close bracket that's next to the P on the keyboard and the open bracket. So you just, you can see the brush over here going left, you know, bigger and smaller. And again, I forgot to group these two layers together. So top one selected, holding down shift, clicking on dodge, hitting command or control G, and I'm gonna name it D and B for dodge and burn. And I'm gonna show you guys what I did so far. Before, after, before, after. And now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the face and do local dodge and burn. So the goal with local dodge and burn is to just fix areas that are a little bit too 
like if there's a bright area of the skin and there's a dark area in there, you just want to dodge a little bit of that dark area to make it blend in with the rest of that brightness or darkness. So the way that I usually do that to the, what I do to really emphasize the inconsistencies of the skin is I'll get a black and white adjustment layer and I'll just go ahead and change the yellows and the reds to be lower. And then that will really, really bring up all the inconsistencies in the skin. But again, this is something that you can definitely also easily overdo. If you correct every single thing, she can look too smooth, which I've done in the past. So one thing that you could do, which is what I usually do, is I overcorrect and then I just change the opacity of the layers. I'll make you, I usually make two new adjustment layers for the closed, the local dungeon burn, which is up close. And I'll just change the, the opacity of that layer to get it where I want to, to be realistic and not too smooth. I'm going to go ahead and just be lazy and copy both of these layers, Command or Control J, and then just invert them or change the color of them to be all black, which is going to hide all the brightness or, or darkness. And then now I'm going to do Dungeon Burn, local Dungeon Burn. Okay, so with the black and white layer still applied, I'm going to show you guys the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. So now I'm going to take it off and show you the before and show you the after. It's very, very subtle. So, but again, sometimes it's not going to be so subtle. Sometimes I've worked on images where, you know, there's definitely areas where it looks too bright and dark in certain areas and it needs to be corrected. So this one was subtle, but they won't always be subtle. So now here is the image zoomed out and before dungeon burn and after dungeon burn. And the very last thing that I'll do is selective color to just change the colors to how I want them to be. And then we'll be done. So let's go ahead and just bring out the selective color adjustment layers on the bottom. And honestly, with this part, it's more about having fun with it and seeing how you want the colors to be. But sometimes I will do two selective color adjustment layers. One I'll do just on the skin. So I'll, you can see that right now everything is white. So that means everything that I'm going to adjust right now is being applied to the entire image. But if you want to just apply, let's say this reddish tone that I just added to the image only on the skin, then that's where you're going to go ahead and just invert that layer, command or control I, and then just paint white on that mask on wherever you want that effect to be applied. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it on just the face. Let's just say I wanted to just affect the skin tone right now. So I'm just gonna paint on the skin, wherever the skin is. And then now, when I go ahead and just make more adjustments, click here. Now, if I go back to zero, now whatever I'm gonna do from now, from this point on, is gonna be just affecting the skin tone. So I can make it a little bit more green, a little bit more magenta, and then you know, anything that you want to adjust right here is basically what you're doing now just to the skin. So like I said before, I'll usually do two of those selective color adjustment layers, one for the skin, one for the background. And after that, I'm pretty much done. So I'm pretty much done with this video now because this is just the creative part. Sometimes the skin tones will be a little bit too magenta. They'll be a little bit too orange looking. And that's where selective color is really, really going to help you out because you can be very selective about how you're altering just the skin or something in the background like the sky. If you want the blues to be a little bit different, you can actually just make another. Because I don't think there's any blues going on except for just on the sky and the wall behind her. And maybe this, you know, meter here. So this, if I go to blues or cyans and I start having fun with it, you can see that it's only being applied on the background, on the meter, on there. And actually this looks pretty cool. From here to here looks pretty interesting. So again, just have fun with it. That's pretty much everything that I do with editing a photo. I fix the exposure if needed to. I'll do in Photoshop, I'll remove distractions, frequency separation, dodge and burn, and then selective color to finish off the photo. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it helped you. And if you guys have any questions about anything at all, let me know in the comment section below. I know this video was a little bit advanced, but that's pretty much how this tutorial, how my edits usually go. It's definitely not basic but I do plan to make more basic, you know, for anyone can watch the tutorial type, types of videos. So that's going to be in the future. So stay tuned. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the very next video.